Section 1.5 Transformations of Functions. In this section, we study how certain transformations of a function affect its graph. This will give us better understanding of how to graph functions. The transformations that we study are shifting, reflecting, and stretching. All right, the first one, vertical shift. Given a function f of x, a new function g of x is equal to f of x plus k, where k is a constant, is a vertical shift of the function f of x. This k here is a vertical shift. All the output values change by k units. If k is positive, the graph will shift up. Again, if k is positive, the graph will shift up. If k is negative, the graph will shift down. Just like an example here, the given function f of x is the blue one. And this new function, f of x plus 1, that is a vertical shift by 1 of the cube root function. This is a cube root function. Another example, to regulate temperature in a green building, airflow vents near the roof open and close throughout the day. Figure 3 shows the area of open vents V in square feet throughout the day in hours after midnight, T. During this summer, the facilities manager decides to try to better regulate the temperature by increasing the amount of open vents by 20 square feet throughout the day and night. Sketch the graph of this new function. Again, uh, based on this problem, uh, the facilities manager decides to try to better regulate temperature by increasing the amount of open vents by 20 square feet. So we are increasing this by 20. So we have a vertical shift up by 20. So you see the, the graph from the blue one and the new one is the red. Next one, example number two, uh, shifting a tabular function vertically. A function f of x is given in table two. We're going to create a function g of x equal to f of x minus 3. So look at your x's here, 2, 4, 6, and 8. And this is your f of x, 1, 3, 7, and 11. You have your f of x minus 3. So we subtract each f of x, your y, the output by 3. So 1 minus 3 is negative 2. 3 minus 3 is 0, 7 minus 3 is 4, 11 minus 3 is 8. Next one, horizontal shift. Given a function f, a new function g of x is equal to f of x minus h, where h is constant, is a horizontal shift of the function f. If h is positive, the graph will shift right. If h is negative, the graph will shift left. Again, if it's positive, it will shift right. And if it's negative, it will shift left. Just like the same example, the cube root function, f of x here, the blue graph, we shift it to the left, that is f of x plus 1. that is towards the negative values of x. And let's use the same figure from uh, the last one, actually figure 3. Suppose that, that in autumn, the facilities manager decides that the original venting plant starts too late and wants to begin the entire venting program two hours earlier. Sketch the graph of the new function. So again, begin the entire program two hours earlier. So we're going to have here uh, V of t plus 2. It has the effect of shifting the graph to the left by 2 hours. Next one, next example, a function f of x is given in table 4. Create a table for the function g of x is equal to f of x minus 3. 
So again, let's use the same table, uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 1, 3, 7, and 11. So if we craft this, the blue one, that's 2, 1, 4, 3, 6, 7, 8, 11. Those are the coordinates of these points here. And f of x minus 3, meaning that there's 3 units to the right. So we move everything 3 units to the right. So from 2 to 5, from 4 to 7, from 6 to 9, and from 8 to 11. So meaning you sh uh, shift your x when you add 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, 4 plus 3 is 7, 6 plus 3 is 9, 8 plus 3 is uh, 11. And you're still using the same f of x, 1, 3, 7, and 11. Next, let's try this. Figure 8 represents a transformation of the toolkit function f of x equal to x squared. This is a parabola. Relate this new function g of x to f of x and then find the formula for g of x. What do you notice here? So our f of x, our function is quadratic function, which is, this is x squared. And what happened here? That's right. You move this. You shift it two to the right. One, two. So that's why we can write this as g of x. Sorry. Is equal to f of x minus two. And since this is x squared, we can write this actually as x minus 2 squared from here. So this is the equation of this parabola. Next one, let's try the next example. Graphing combined vertical and horizontal shifts. So given f of x is an absolute value function, absolute value of x, sketch a graph of h of x given f of x plus 1 minus 3. So let's recall from vertical shifts, if it's negative, meaning You shift down three units. That's correct. Sorry about my my pen. Uh, shift down three units, and how about this one? F of x plus one. That is shifting left one unit. That's correct. And this should look like this. So from the blue one, if you shift it. To the left by one and then shift it uh, next by shifting down three units and you will have this green and this is your final graph so this is the graph of your H <clears throat> so actually you can do it uh, if you want also uh, this one we did it uh, to the left first and then uh, three down or you could do it shift it uh, by shifting down three units and then shifting left one unit and you will still get the same answer next one write the formula for a graph shown in figure 11 
which is the transformation of the square root function. Square root function is this. f of x is equal to square root of x. And what do you think is this new one? From here, move it to the right one, and then you go up two. So to the right one and up two. So the answer here will be, so let's use h. So h of x is equal to so to the right one, so that is f of x minus 1 and up to plus 2. Or you can see that h of x, since this is a square root function, x minus 1 such that to x, that's x minus 1 plus 2. So this is the answer. Next one, vertical and horizontal reflections of a function. Take a look at these graphs here. Look at the original function, f of x, blue. The red one is a horizontal reflection. Then you reflect it by the y-axis. Imagine it by flipping it by about the y-axis and the green is the vertical reflection that is a reflection about the x-axis. Alright, let's have some example here. Reflect the graph of s of t is equal to square root of t square root function uh, vertically and horizontally letter a vertically so this is a graph of a horizontal uh, square root function then here is the vertical reflection of the square root function so it's you reflected it uh, about the x axis the other one Horizontal reflection is a reflection about the y-axis. So take a look at the difference between the two. Vertical reflection and horizontal reflection. Okay, next example. A common model for learning has an equation similar to k of t is equal to negative 2 raised to negative t plus 1, where k is the percentage of mastery that can be achieved after a practice sessions. This is transformation of the function f of t is equal to 2 to the power of t, shown in figure 15. Sketch the graph of k of t. So again, this is the exponential 2 to the power of t. And we want to graph k of t is equal to negative 2 raised to negative t plus 1. So here, first we can apply the horizontal reflection and then vertical reflection and then plus 1 that is a vertical shift. So let's start here with the horizontal reflection. So that is when horizontal. Uh, 
Ah, oh, sorry, it's not writing it right. Horizontal reflection that is f of negative t the first one horizontal reflection that is f of negative t is equal to 2 raised to negative t and then vertical reflection that's negative 2 raised to negative t and then the last one is plus 1 that is a vertical shift next even and add functions a function is called an even function if for every input x f of x is equal to f of negative x and the graph of even function is symmetric about the y-axis. Take note of this. And then it is an odd function if every input of x f of x is equal to negative of f of negative x. And the graph is symmetric about the origin. So again, see the difference between the two. Even function symmetric about the y-axis. Add function symmetric about the origin. Let's take a look at the cubic function here. Letter a is f of x equal to x cubed. That's a cubic, fu cubic function. Letter b is a horizontal reflection, f of negative x. And letter c is horizontal, which is f of negative x. And then negative f of negative x is a vertical reflection. And as you can see, that is exactly the same thing as this. That is the original cubic function. So we can say that a cubic function is an add function. Let's try this. Next example. Is the function f of x equals x cubed plus 2x even, add, or neither? First thing we do here is to solve for f of negative x. So meaning substitute negative x to the x. So negative x cube plus 2 times negative x negative x cubed is negative x cubed plus 2 times negative x is negative 2x So as you can see, this is not exactly as the original function, x cubed plus 2x. How about, can we try negative of f of negative x? If we factor out negative, Is that right? Negative of x cubed plus 2x and yeah, 
since negative of f of negative x is equal to negative x cubed plus 2x is equal to f of x therefore this is an add function okay next one vertical stretches and compressions So given a function f of x, a new function g of x is equal to a times f of x, where a is a constant, is a vertical stretch or a vertical compression. When do we know if it's a, uh, a stretch or a, comp a compression? Vertical stretch if a is greater than 1. It's, it is compression if it's between 0 and 1. And if it's less than 0, then it's a combination of vertical stretch or compression. Look at this. Given f of x, vertical stretch, that is 2 times f of x, that a is greater than 1. If a is between 0 and 1, like this one, 0 0.5, it is a vertical compression. So this is how it looks like with a parabola. You stretch it vertically and and an example of a vertical compression. Okay, let's have an example here. A function p of t models the population of fruit flies. The graph is shown in figure 20. A scientist comparing this population to another population, q whose growth follows the same pattern, but twice as large. Sketch a graph of this population. So again, twice as large. So how do we craft this? So with that figure, P of T, uh, look at the points here. This point here is 0, 1. We have that oops, here. 0, 1, 3, 3, uh, 6, 2 and 7, 0 to graph the Q uh, twice as large all you have to do is multiply the Y's by 2 1 times 2 is 2 3 times 2 is 6 2 times 2 is 4 0 times 0 is 0 and plot those points so 0, 2, 3, 6, 6, 4 and 7, 0 so that is a vertical stretch of P. And this is your Q, Q of T. Next one. The graph in figure 20, 22 is a transformation of x cubed. Sorry, this is cubic. Relate this new function g of x to f of x and then find a formula for g of x. When trying to determine a vertical stretch or shift, it is helpful to look for a point on the graph that is relatively clear. This is the graph of g of x and I can use this point here and that tells me that g of 2 is equal to 2. So remember that g of x is cubic f of x is a cubic <clears throat> and we know that cubic is x cubed so if we have oops f of 2 that's going to be 
Let's think about uh, x cubed, the blue one, 2 cubed is equal to 8. But since we want it to, what do we need to do to, uh, to 8 to make it 2? Yes, that is correct. Uh, you divide it by 4. So meaning this is 1 fourth of f of x. Since your f of x is your cubic function. So you can say that our g of x, this graph, is equal to one fourth of x cubed. Okay. All right, so these are examples of this time horizontal uh, compression and stretch. The blue one is given quadratic function y equals x squared the green one horizontal compression 2x quantity squared and this is the horizontal stretch 0.5x raised to the power of 2 so horizontal stretches and compressions uh, if b is greater than 1 then it will be compressed by 1 over b. If it's between 0 and 1, then the graph will be stretched by 1 over b. So that is in the form of g of x equal to f of b x. f of b x. The number inside the parentheses with x. Again, if b is greater than 1, it will be a compression that will be compressed by 1 over b and if it's between 0 and 1 it will be stretched by 1 over b and if it's less than 0 and negative it's a combination of a horizontal stretch or a compression let's use this example uh, this is p of t the original population and this is the trans transform population so you will see here that the effect on the graph from here to here is a horizontal compression where all input values are half of their original distance from the vertical axis look at this this is 7 this is 3.5 this point here is uh, 6 half of it is 3 this point here is 3 half of it is 1.5 everything is half of it So here the new population will progress in an hour, the same amount as original population does in two hours. And in two hours, it will progress as much as the original population does in four hours. Next one, next example, a function of x is given as table 13, create a table uh, for the function g of x is equal to f of 1 half x. Alright, here is, is uh, table 13. x values are 2, 4, 6, 8. f of x, 1, 3, 7, and 11. And we want this, g of x is equal to f of 1 half x. Take a look at your x's. 2, 4, 6, 8. So, like the first one what uh, if you multiply our x by one half we should get two what is that value of x yes four because half of four is two how about four yes half of eight is four and then half of twelve is six and half of 16 is 8 all 
or from here you double it 2 times 2 is 4 4 times 2 is 8 6 times 2 is 12 8 times 2 is 16 so this is the graph so as you can see here uh, 4 1 then 8 3 12 7 and 16 11 next one relate the function g of x to f of x in figure 26 let's take a look at the two graphs g of x and f of x the red and the blue let's take a look at some points here so let's say this point the coordinates are 2 4 compared to this one this is 6 4 let's have another one about this the coordinates are 1 3 and this one this is 3 3 What do you notice? That's right, we can see that the x values have been compressed by one third because six times one third, this one, six times one third is two, three times one third is one. That is correct. So we can say that our g of x is equal to f of 3x this is a horizontal compression by one side and next one combining transformations So when combining vertical transformations written in the form of a of f of x plus k, first vertically stretch by a and then vertically shift by k. So the a part first, then vertical shift. When combining horizontal transformations written in the form f of bx minus h, first horizontal shift and then horizontal stretch. If this is B, it's going to be horizontal stretch by 1 over B. And the other one, when combining horizontal transformations written in the form F of B times X minus H, first you have to do this B. This is horizontal stretch by 1 over B, and then the horizontal shift by H. So that is when you combine your transformations. <clears throat> okay, an example here use the graph of f of x and figure 27 to sketch the graph of k of x is equal to f of 1 half x plus 1 minus 3. What do we do here? So let me go back here and write. First, we can start by factoring out the inside of the function. F times one half of x plus two. minus 3 so by doing that by factoring the inside we can first horizontally stretch by 2 because we have here as you can see 1 half so that is a horizontal st stretch by 2 take a look at the next slide 
look at the graph that was a horizontal stretch by two next one is horizontal shift to the left by two so let's go back here x plus two meaning that is a horizontal shift to the left two to the left so from here you move all of this to the left two by two and then the last one is a vertical shift down by three so take note of this again minus three that is a vertical shift down by three and there you go so this is your graph that's it about this section 1.5 thank you